Good morning, folks. Welcome, observers. Today, we've got space weather to watch, as always. There are some earthquakes to mention today, an excellent study on solar climate forcing, and then a look at a paleo intensity stack that shows several of the past disaster cycles. We're starting, as always, with the last 24 hours on our star, and we find another calm day. Sunspots haven't flared. Eruptive activity is absent. Northern Corona Hole is closing from the caboose. Space weather is expected to be mild for several days here, but we are going to keep watching the sunspots. Two on the right side are likely to depart without making much of a fuss. The southern group on the left made the M5 flare 36 hours ago, but has gone silent, and that leaves the incoming northern group. It is a compact active region, several umbral cores tied in close proximity. Best chance for flaring today is likely this sunspot. Top quake of the last day struck Taiwan. Luckily, a blood echo deep enough to minimize surface shaking. Several above average events there in the last month, actually, so hopefully those aren't foreshocks. And following the super deep blood echo in Argentina we reported yesterday, they did take a 6.2 in Peru, but that was also relatively deep. We're moving on next to solar forcing kind of. Most of the field has moved past total solar irradiance to spectral irradiance, or they're focused on the particle and IMF forcing of the global electric circuit and atmospheric gradient. But this team went back to the old thing and still managed to find significant impact on climatological factors, including surface temperature. While this truly is an exploration of dinosaur bones in the climate realm, it still showed the influence of the sun even while handicapping their own ability to do so. Top story today, a new paleo intensity stack out of Mexico and it's showing several events. Now while the hands-on science appears to be pretty rock solid in this work, their insertion of it into the bigger picture gets about a D minus. Let me explain. When they try to figure out where which line wiggle goes with which excursion from the past, it was an absolute catastrophe, starting up top. Definitely can see the deviations for the NOAA event one half cycle ago. Gothenburg is showing up pretty well too. The primary exposure period of the sample of this paper was that middle range where, yes, Helena Pauli was about 18,000 years ago, but the more common name for the event 24,000 years ago is Lake Mungo, not Rockall. It's about 80-20 in the literature. After that, the Mexican team didn't want to shout out the Michoacan event 30,000 years ago. Okay, and come now, I bet 75% of you know Le Champ was much later and that the 36,000 years ago event was the Mono Lake excursion. So folks, yes, I could take this reliably back to 72,000 years ago, but then the text would be very small and I would run out of pretty colors. Every 6,000 years is an excursion, with every other cycle, 12,000 years, bringing a major event. We are due for the major one. It's time. It has already begun. The magnetic poles are shifting. Magnetic field is weakening. It is accelerating every few years, and it's a near extinction level event. Lots of links below to learn more and to start prepping, including to our winter tour. Orlando is 13 days away, then Dallas in February and Las Vegas during March Madness, except we're going to be a bit more focused on how to survive the disaster than basketball. And as a reminder, several prepping experts say that there are prepping gems I thought of that nobody else did, and if anything close to our version of the disaster is what unfolds, you're going to need a miracle to make it without the specialized guidance. Tour and disaster prepping events at Observer Ranch next year are all linked below. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now at 6.05 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.